And we've got Touch Base and Soul. Very pleased to have joining us this week, Professor Jeffrey Holiday. He's an assistant professor at Korea University's Department of Korean Language and Literature. Uh, he joined the university's faculty in 2015, becoming the first ever full-time foreign professor to teach a Korean linguistics course here. And so uh, we're going to talk about his life and career. Uh, very pleased to have here in the studio, Professor Holiday. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, we have... Um, I'm sure a lot to talk about, but first maybe uh, get through uh, the very beginning of how you got here. Uh, you became interested apparently in Korean uh, through some friends mm -hmm. uh, while you were studying at, I believe you, we call it now the Ohio State That's University, correct. right? The Ohio State University. Uh, you came here in 2004, so a little over a decade mm -hmm. ago. Um, what what was it about Korean? Because that does mm -hmm. seem like from an American point of view, mm -hmm. a pretty random quest, uh, yeah. language to get interested yeah. in. Well, it I think it was pretty much just that random. Um, it, you know, like I said, I had Korean friends when I was an undergrad. My undergrad degree was actually in accounting. So I oh, was wow. um, in the business school and um, things haven't changed. There's still a lot of Koreans that go to business school. Um, so, yeah, I think just surrounding me, I, I had made friends with some Koreans and uh, they like to speak Korean a lot. Um, they don't like yeah. to speak Korean in front of each other. And I think just kind of hang out with them and they're always being Korean. I just wanted to learn it too um and they were i think they thought it was kind of fun to teach right because uh, back, again back then it wasn't as, as cool um and so that no one really wanted to learn it and so i think that's just kind of how it was it wasn't that there's was anything specific about korean per se it was just um i've always enjoyed language and i think it was probably just the experience of being able to actually use it and have like real speakers that right. that you know i could interact with um and then i think it's just kind of it snowballs from there so there yeah. really wasn't anything about korean at the beginning but then of course the more you learn the more rewarding it is and and here i am so um i think it was kind of random if it seems that yeah way. well i mean <laughs> i think you made a key point here uh, before it was cool and so this was yeah. at least in the Very u.s yeah. at least in the u.s before the explosion of k-pop yeah. and bts and these k-dramas where you you have a now a pretty sizable pocket yeah. of the u.s population wanting to learn more about the culture mm -hmm. and the language yeah. um maybe not so much back in the early 2000s yeah. um then what was the uh decision to as far as a career, mm -hmm. um, pursuing an academic career, which mm -hmm. entailed studying mm -hmm. linguistics, you went back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. to to study linguistics. Um, yeah. Did you always have it in your mind that I was going? My goal was going to be a no. Korean linguist. Was Not at all. Okay. Uh, my I I passed my CPA exam and then I went to Korea to study Korean. So my goal was to be an accountant. Um, and I think it was during my time here. You know, I just I really just love learning language and I think a lot of people who like language they don't really know what to do with it mm -hmm. and also like a lot of people I didn't really know what linguistics was I hadn't I mean, I heard of the term but I didn't know what they did in that field um, and actually what it was was a friend of mine a Korean friend back in the States her uh, father was a linguistics professor here in Korea and so mm -hmm. while I was here I happened to meet him a um, Korean yeah yeah okay, he was okay. a professor at Seoul National University and so I met him and you know I was like, oh what do you do and what's linguistics and that's actually how I got and I was like oh I didn't know you could study this right. uh, that sounds exactly what I would like to do and so then uh, when my time was over I went back to the states and then had some time to kind of figure out my life path and um, I decided to take a linguistics class and I found out I really did like it and then I had a couple years of just taking coursework to prepare for grad school and then I started my PhD in linguistics. But and even then, my goal wasn't necessarily to come back to Korea. It was just I want to study linguistics. And then, um, but because I'd already studied Korean, it was natural that in linguistics I would do research on Korean, I and see. so that kind of became a focus. Um, so yeah. okay, uh, this might be an odd question, but how many of you are there as far as uh, I don't, linguistics yeah. professors who specialize or focus yeah. on Korean? Well, linguistics? I mean, there are many. Um, if you're asking for non-ethnically Korean right. ones. Um, then I guess I'm not sure. I can think of a couple off the top of my head, um, but there are probably more. Um, so, yeah. So maybe more common than you might think, but sure. also um, still not tons. And, <laughs> and, and, and I, I'm imagining with a generational change now yeah. with more of a wider interest in Korean culture and Korean language, perhaps yeah. that will those numbers will probably grow in four Yeah, um, you know, I think so in my classes here, in my undergrad class, I generally get you know, like 15 to 20 exchange students, you know, ones who are just here for a brief mm -hmm. period. And I'm surprised at how many are American or Canadian, you know, coming from wow. North America and, you know, they're native English speakers and also how few of them are heritage learners. Mm. So back when I took Korean class uh, in college, you know, I was typically the only non-heritage learner in the class. Um, and now, 
you know, again, it's like, oh, wow, you're taking Korean. Uh, whereas now, you know, you get all these people who are not heritage learners and they're really interested in it. And so, yeah, who knows, maybe in 10 years, there might be more people like me. I mean, I think this is kind of why I don't think of myself as being all that like interesting, because I feel like I'm just I'm just the natural product. Like if you have a whole system designed to teach people Korean, sure, it's natural that there's going to be a couple people that actually do the whole thing. Yeah. You know, and then this is what you get. And so like now if we have a system like that, um, it would make sense if there would be more people who would um, try to pursue something similar. So, yeah. From the expat perspective, I'm sure you've heard this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost become a meme. Uh, how Hangul, as it as an alphabet, is this mm-hmm. uh, v- very genius designed alphabet, mm-hmm. uh, very very logical in the way the characters are shaped mm-hmm. to form the the, mm-hmm. the the words and the sounds. The language itself has been deemed to be notoriously difficult to learn if you are not of, mm-hmm. or especially if you are of a European persuasion. Do, mm-hmm. do you find that stereotype to be true? I mean, it's hard for sure. Um... Yeah. <laughs> why, why so, though? I mean, um, I mean, so if you think about languages that are easy to learn, so, I mean, I don't, I mean, not, I don't want to call them easy, but you know, something like Spanish, for example. Which if they get, you're it, part of a Romance yeah. language, um, yeah, it's which English is not, but Romance still, language, right? um, yeah. you know, there's a lot of vocabulary that's shared. Um, you know, there are a lot of things they do in the grammar are things that we have similar things here. And so it's it's just it's not super hard to you know draw analogies between English and, let's say, you know, German or or um, Spanish, whereas Korean is just there's just it's just quite different. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one thing that makes Korean easier is that it is quite easy to learn how to read. Mm-hmm. Um, is that, you know, certainly is helpful. Um, but I think just learning vocabulary, it's a lot of memorization, you know, where you can't draw analogies between this Korean word and this English word. I mean, there are lots of loan words now. Right. But um you know, there's there's tons of homophones, um, and I think just learning vocabulary makes it really difficult. I mean, even for me, like my Korean is pretty fluent, mm-hmm. but um, definitely, like I don't remember lots of words. Like right. usually, when I stumble in my speech, it's because I can't think of the word. Right. Um, and so I think that is something that makes it difficult. And there's also, an added aspect where um, a knowledge of the Chinese characters that are derived from many of these words actually go a long ways to helping mm-hmm. you understand the language better yeah, as well, right? Yeah, and it's kind of circular. I mean, the more you learn Korean, the more you become familiar with these things, and that would make it easier. But I think if you never really get your foot in the door, then it might just seem like, you know, inscrutable right. and you know, difficult. So. As, as a university professor, I imagine, you know, part of the time is uh, dedicated to teaching, part of the time is dedicated to research. Specifically, uh, what mm-hmm. do you generally do? Uh, what courses you're teaching mm-hmm. and what are you focusing on with research? Um, so my general schedule each semester is I teach two classes, one undergrad and one graduate. Uh, my graduate course is, it differs, but it's generally something about research methods. So uh, I'm generally not teaching the graduate students much about uh, Korean language itself. It's really more about how to do research on Korean. So like how to design a study to program an experiment, run stats, uh, write papers. So that's and that's really what I think they need. Um, and so that's generally I'm doing with graduate students. Uh, with undergraduate students, uh, my rotation now seems to be uh, one semester I do intro to Korean linguistics and the other one, um, I, which I'm doing this semester, is uh, I call it Korean language variation. So kind of like social linguistics. Mm. Um, and so I just go back and forth between those. But with the undergrads, again, I get a, a big chunk of exchange students every semester. And the grad students tend to be pretty much uh, Korean. Plus, there's a couple international students right. in the department. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> I understand that uh, your courses are taught in English. Yes, everything's in English. You have a diverse student body, right? You have mm-hmm. foreign students, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. as well as Korean students mm-hmm. whose native tongue would be yeah. Korean. I'm not sure how unique that is mm-hmm. uh, in, in uh, Korean academia, but mm-hmm. do you find that there is a, a nuance in terms of how a Korean student approaches mm-hmm. your class to, mm-hmm. uh, let's say, a foreign student approaches Yeah, definitely. Your class? Um, I think... I think for the Korean students, uh, what they, well, I mean, because I always ask them every semester, like, why are you in this class at the beginning, give them a little survey. Um, Then also I read my evaluations at the end. And something I've consistently seen both in why they took it and then in their, their, um, their, like, after, you know, afterthoughts is, uh, you know, they're interested to know, uh, to get a new perspective on the language. Just hear, like, what a non-native speaker thinks, like, when they look at the language and when they approach it. And I definitely intentionally put that in my class where I, I try and say things that I know are going to uh, push some buttons, um, like things I know that they've been taught and I'm trying to show them, you know, that might actually not be true. Or if you look at these other languages, it's actually the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I intentionally bring in a lot of content from other languages to show them. I mean, because that's part of being an expert in Korean is not just you can't just know Korean. You have to know how Korean is different right. or how it's not different. Right. Um, and I think what surprises some people is how it's not different. 
Um, and that's part of what linguistics is, is seeing like what are the commonalities yeah. between languages. For the exchange students, I think for them, they're just thrilled to have a class about Korean taught in English because a lot of them, they're, they're studying Korean and they're really passionate about it, but they're not yet at a, a level where they could take a whole college class taught in the language. Right. Um, and so they really want to know about the language. And then here I am, like, I can tell you, like, anything you want to know about. I mean, not anything, but pretty much whatever you're going to want to know, yeah. I can explain it in English. Um, and so I think they're happy just to be able to do that um, because, I mean, my colleagues are great, but I don't think any of them uh, would want to teach a class in English. And sure. some of them, I don't even know if they could. Um, but they certainly don't want to. Um, and so I think having me there, it's like, okay, mm. good. Like you can, you know, and especially if you want to increase, you know, awareness and interest in the language, I think it makes sense to have someone who can communicate with right. people outside of those who are already native speakers. That's true. And I think that's another important, this might be a simplistic question for you, but uh, we have a listenership that's um, global all over the world. And one common bond, I think, with our listenership is there is an interest in Korean, whether it's news, mm -hmm. Korean culture, Korean society, and the Korean language. And if you have um, a foreign listenership and, and they have an interest in learning Korean, but they, they mm -hmm. still feel intimidated mm -hmm. by its foreignness or mm -hmm. the difficulty in learning language. What, what kind of advice would you give them as to best tackle this from a novice level? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I think, I mean, on some level, I think language learning is really the same. It doesn't really matter what the language is. You have right. to you can't give up. I mean, you have to be consistent like in anything. That so you're just download to the Duolingo app and <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the beginnings, like you're, you're just kind of, you just kind of got to stick it out. Um, you know, I, one thing I noticed in my own learning um, was once you get to a level where you can, you know, read some, yeah. uh, I do think reading is highly underrated. Mm. Um, I think that people really think like, you know, I need to be good at conversation. I need to like learn how to interact and that's important. But, um, having time where you're reading is so valuable because you're basically, it's just unlimited input. Um, and this is like, it's more coming from a, like my perspective as a linguist rather than like a language learner is that, you know, if you're reading a book, even if it's a simple children's book, you know, what you're really getting is a list of good sentences in the language. Like these are well-formed sentences in the language. Um, and, you know, the more that you expose yourself to that, the more you're going to kind of develop an instinct for like, what is a good utterance in Korean? Like, yeah. Yeah, like these words make sense. These words don't. Like these two words, I've never seen them before. I read a lot of books. I've never seen these two words together. So I don't think they go together. Mm. Like th this adjective can't be applied to that now because I've never seen it before. You know, but if you don't get a lot of exposure to the language, you wouldn't have an instinct, right? You think, well, this means this in my language and this means this. So I'll put them together. And they're like, oh, yeah. we never say that. You know, but if you're someone who is getting a lot of input, you know, whether it's through conversation which is great, but also through reading, um, then I think you can kind of learn to develop that instinct. Like what is what sounds natural, um, and you know if you don't read, then you have to get that entirely right. from contact right. with people, and that can be hard to get. So. Well, uh, as far as your academic career, um, what lies in store for you? Do mm -hmm. you see yourself at Korea University for the foreseeable future? Maybe go back and um, get mean, a tenureship in, it's, in, in the U.S.? It's a, it's a nice job. I, um, I'm i really happy there. Uh, I'm not just saying that because I'm in public. Uh, <laughs> and they're listening. They, yeah, no, they, they've really, I've been surprised, actually. They've, they treat me really well. Uh, they, I think they do whatever they can do to enable me to do my job well. Um, and uh, they help me do my research in whatever way that they can. So I feel very well supported. So um, I'm not, I'm definitely not like trying to leave. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'm just gonna, I mean, who knows in life, you just kind of wait and see. Right. But yeah. Well, uh, we thank you for uh, taking the time out of your schedule to join us here in the studio and hopefully have you back again sometime in the future. Sure. Best of luck to you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.